Hello, I am Stephen A. Hart. I'm the Director of Content Marketing here at the Sands Institute. Today, I'm pleased to introduce a conversation between three extraordinary people. First is Lynn Dome. She is the energetic Executive Director of Women in Cybersecurity, often referred to as WESIS. Next is Max Shufton. He's the Director of Mission Programs and Partnerships here at Sands Institute. And lastly, person and story that we wanted to highlight in this conversation today, Christine Morenzi. She's a truly dynamic cybersecurity practitioner, cloud security engineer, and leader at Merck. Welcome to the three of you. Lynn, I'm going to pass the mic to you and ask that you share a little bit more context on WESIS and its mission. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. It's so great to be here today. So my name is Lynn Dome, and I'm here to talk a little bit about the WESIS organization, but most importantly, how we're creating accessibility and opportunity for women to not only get into their cybersecurity careers, but advance, uh, advance in their careers because of it. And so it's a great honor to be able to highlight our security training scholarship. And Christine Morrissey was part of the very first cohort of that scholarship. So we've been following her journey, loving her journey, and we see her continue to grow and expand in her career from the launching pad that WESIS and Sands Institute created many years ago. So the Women in Cybersecurity Organization organization, often referred to as WESIS, is a 501c3 nonprofit with a mission to recruit, retain, and advance women in cybersecurity. We have over 10,000 global members and have representation in 93 countries. In addition to that, we also have 270 student chapters and all of their members. And in addition to that, we also have 70 professional affiliates, either run a specific region, corporation, or a specialty area or topic, and all of their members. So each and every day, our reach is very far and wide, um, reaching hundreds and thousands when you're looking at the social media and all the ways that we're able to partner, engage with strategic partners and our community. And what we do is we really create programming efforts that create that inclusive space for women that might not necessarily um, consider exploring cybersecurity to come across what the WESIS offerings are and to be able to have this entry point on what does cybersecurity look like for them? And maybe perhaps potentially this is a career choice, a career choice that would get them into the lucrative career of cybersecurity that we're always, always talking about. And so a prime example of that is Christine Morrissey coming into the 2020 Security Training Scholarship. And I, I'll go ahead and um, uh, pass the mic on over to Christine to introduce herself. And then I just want to learn a little bit more, Christine, like how did... How do you even come across the security training scholarship? You know, at WESIS, we're always like, we're creating an inclusive space. We want to create accessibility. We want to find that hidden talent. And um, we're always trying to be creative and innovative and unique on getting ourselves out there so people feel the safety and security of coming in and getting involved. And so first introduce yourself and then share, how did you come across this opportunity in 2020? And what resonated with you that you're like, huh? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go for that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Lynn, for that introduction. Um, my name is Christine Morenzi, and I currently serve as a cloud security specialist at Merck. Um, right now, I initially I had started as a physical therapist um, many years ago, about seven seven years ago, and I was part of this um, Microsoft Teams group called Minority People in STEM, just in just in general STEM. And someone in that Teams group had posted a flyer that was showing the Women in Cybersecurity Training Scholarship. And in that flyer, they said that they'd be able to train or upskill people with absolutely no tech background, meaning, and also have a job, like career placement. And I was extremely skeptical. But I, however, I was also in a place where I did enjoy doing physical therapy but it was the middle of the pandemic where a lot of people at that time were kind of looking at their lives, reflecting, thinking about a change. And I was too. Um, so I was skeptical, but I was like, hey, if they say that I can do it or if they, you know, are advertising that they can help anyone with the non-technical background, maybe I'll give it a shot. And so I went ahead and enrolled. They asked for a small little statement, nothing big and said, hey, why would you want to do this? So why would you want to participate? I said, hey, well, I want to learn as much as I can about cyber. I want to learn about a whole new world. And so I joined. And the first part, which I think really drew me in, was that it was the first round was a CTF. 
I've never heard of a CTF before or capture the flag. Um, however, but it was a very fun gamified experience. I think many times we look at cyber and think that, okay, opening up a textbook is the first way and the only way to get into cyber or sitting in a classroom or a lecture hall is the only way to get into cyber. Um, WESIS introduced me into cyber via a gamified platform. There was a scoreboard, there was a Slack channel, there was a whole bunch of, I think it was 900 something women who applied and we were all, you know, talking to each other, trying to get, you know, hints, help, you know, how did you solve this? I mean, it was truly like a game. And for me, that gamified experience is what really pulled me in. I found out I had an aptitude. I was generally really curious and really excited to continue and keep learning. So actually ended up placing, I think, top 100. So, and that was another thing that I didn't have to be perfect. I didn't have to be the first place winner. I had to show that I wanted to try and I kept trying. Um, and even placing top 100 to me was extremely surprising considering I had no background. But like I said, they made it very accessible. There was easy, difficult, medium, like different levels of um, uh, challenges. Uh, so that's, I think that's what really put, pulled me in. And of course, as you matriculate, there's also CyberStart, which, you know, unfortunately sunsetted, but that was another gamified experience. And then we got into the workbook, the textbooks, the labs, the rigorous learning. Um, but I really believe that Wiese's unique way of introducing cyber and kind of having that paved road um, is really what is needed in industry right now because everyone thinks that, you know, there's just a textbook or this one way and there's so many different ways and I thank them for that. Yeah, a lot of times in my conversations that I have when I go to all these different events, even folks are like, I want to get into cyber. I look into it. How do I get into cyber? But it's so confusing and it's so convoluted. And it's like, oh my gosh, do I start here? Do I start there? And what do I even do after that? So when we built out this program, um, thanks to Google in 2020, we did it intentionally tiered on one, let's just get you in and get you involved and get you excited. And then if you have that aptitude, grit, that determination, and, and you're advancing forward, you you eventually go up into those advanced SAN certifications and career placement. But even if you're, you, you're stepping out at tier two, you're walking away with skills and opportunities and, and um, you know, importantly, the skills that you could continue to build upon. And, um, you know, that's the value of building out a program that's tiered to that point. And so, so you got in, you got involved. I love that you loved every ounce of the wraparound services of the Slack channel, the mentoring, the ask me anything, the real heavily engaged community that is a part of the process of the programming effort. Um, and then you got those CN certifications. And so after that, the career placement services, tell me about your first job. And, mm -hmm. and you did all of that from the moment that you signed up for the WISA Security Training Scholarship and the moment that you finished the certifications and the career placement, what was that time frame? Um, exactly. I think the moment I signed up to the placement was 15 months or around 12 months. So I remember it was August, 2020. That's when I did the first CTF. And then I started working at my first job at Booz Allen, um, November, 2021. So yeah, so about that time, that was a time frame. Um, and I was working as a PT full time the entire time. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you have to, yeah, I had at the time my daughter was one. Um, yeah, at the time, and I had to keep working, you know, there was no like, okay, take a break. And so I just, you know, did my nine to five and then CTFs and like Google researches and studying in lab was my five to nine, um, even on weekends. Um, so I had amazing support. Um, but still, I just carved out that time because it was really important to me. It was really fun. It was something so new. And like I said, it was just very engaging. And so that was the the time frame from, you know, taking the sand certs. You know, I think also my first WESIS conference I went to, uh, I wasn't hired yet. I was still, I had just finished, you know, my, my uh certifications. And I wanted to go there to kind of get myself out there. I met with um, some SAN specialists there too. I remember Beth, I think was there, Max was there. 
Um, and they were just extremely helpful. Um, the career specialists, I can't talk highly enough about the ones that were helping me at the time. I know they're no longer with SANS, but unfortunately, like they were just so amazing. Um, and they met me at the conference and said, hey, we want to get you in front of this person. We want to get an interview with this person. And I'm like, wow, I literally just passed my exams like a month ago. And they're like, that's fine. We're going to get you in front of some, some employers. And I mean, that, like I said, was just, I think, really got me hired so quickly. Um, it was just that support. And I also went to the conference, you know, not quite having a job yet. I went into the conference because I was like, hey, I want to get myself out there. I know this is the next step for me. So let me make sure I network and meet people. So, yeah. And Kristen, what did that even feel like? Like, we're oh, you were a, a career changer, like going from PT to no technical to career placement in 15 months time. Yeah. Like I hear that and it gives me chills because I'm like, this is, and you, you had like that incredible amount of resilience and hustle because you knew this was important to you yeah. and this is how you were investing in yourself. And it's not easy. And we know that it's not easy. We're not saying that this is an easy program, but we're saying that it could be a program that achieves re major results and makes an impact, not only on the workforce, but on the individuals that go through it. But what does it feel like 15 months, like you changed your entire career trajectory? Like, is that a huge pat on the back when you were done? Were you like, I did this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, always, I always say that it really did change my life because it changed something inside me and who I am as a person. Like I didn't, I really believed when I finished and got my PT degree, my doctorate, I was like, I'm as smart or as good as I possibly can be. Like I reached the peak of myself and going through this and completely changing careers with very little transferable skills. Like there's no like, you know, that not much, you know, technical things from PT I could bring into cyber stuff, like the soft skills, the people skills, things like that. Um, and I was having to stretch myself. I had to stretch in ways that I never thought possible. Um, this is just, that's what helped me to grow and helped me to realize like, wow, like patting myself on the back is an understatement. Like I do more than that. I'm like, wow, I'm just so impressed with myself. The fact that I was able to go and even where I am in, in tech is it's cloud. Like I'm, I'm very technical. I would say I'm pretty technical. Um, and I enjoy being like that technical. I enjoy, you know, knowing as much as I love the cloud. I love anything automation. I love DevSecOps. I love all of that. Um, but yeah, I would say it's transformative. Transformative for me as a person, how I thought about myself, how I viewed myself, um, what I thought my capabilities were. Now I'm like, I mean, I can do anything. I, that's how I feel now because... I thought that was it for me, but no, like there's so much more stretching and growing that I've done, you know, leadership wise, you know, speaking engagements. I haven't done any of that in my previous career as well as this career has afforded me the opportunity to do more things like that. So tremendous amount of growth. Thank you, Christine. And I, I wanted to come back to something you and Lynn spoke about a minute ago, you know, in terms of that grit you had to have to get through this program, you, you spoke kindly about some of the support that was there, but at the end of the day, you were doing the hard work, you were carving out the time, balancing still being a physical therapist as well as having you know, a family and personal life. Um, you know, Obviously the pandemic is thankfully behind us, but people today still burn out in careers um, all the time. What would your advice be to say another physical therapist or someone working in marketing or accounting who's ready for that career change and going through a program such as this one? What would your you know, 60 seconds of advice to them be? Um, absolutely. I will say, first of all, to the preface this, there have been physical therapists, speech therapists, marked like all kinds of people who've already made the change. I have a friend who I used to work with at the PT, and now she works at the SEC, and she's doing cyber for them. I mean, and my advice to her was get a partner up with a mentor, partner up with someone who's done it, which was me. I partnered with her um, and, you know, have them help you kind of pave the way, like someone who's already kind of done it and, you know, just reach out and say, hey, what do you think I should do? What are the programs available to me? Um, can you write me a recommendation? Like whatever. And I'm sure they'll be happy to help you. Um, and just seek out the program. Seek out, you know, if you're a women in cyber, um, SANS has like the Diversity Academy, the HBCU. There's so many accessible like programs. And that's where I my usual go to is any type of immersion academy for cybersecurity. Whenever someone's like, I want to make a transition, I want to make a change. I'm like, go this route, go towards the immersion academies that SANS offers because they're 
I mean, just well thought out, you know, laid out really nicely. Um, and if you want to go another route, you know, I just say, hey, find network, find someone who's willing to spend some time to explain things and say, hey, this is the don't make this wrong turn. So that's kind of the adv advice I would give. I've always gave the advice of WESIS or SANS or, you know, some type of scholarship program that will enable you and help you. Got it. Thank you. And so obviously, you know, you did great in the program. I mean, kind of the, the sub goals of the program are to learn skills and achieve certifications with the ultimate goal is to help empower people to get jobs. And you did get a job, as you mentioned, at Booz Allen Hamilton. Um, can you talk a little bit about that first job, what it felt like starting it, um, what you were most nervous about, what you, you know, what lessons learned you had over that first year there, uh, both in terms of the technical job, you know, role, as well as some of the soft skills and communication aspect on the business side? Yeah, absolutely. So I will say I felt very like imposter syndrome was really bad in the first job. I just didn't feel like I was able to do it. I was scared. Um, there was things asked of me where I was like, well, I don't even know where to begin to do that. Or, you know, I just I had a lot of like doubts. I'm not going to lie in the first job. However, I was fortunate enough to have team members. They give us a buddy, like a buddy system. I also had colleagues who were willing to spend time and like getting me up to speed. Um, Booz Allen is also a consulting company. So we have to make sure we are putting our best self and our best skills engineers in front of the client. So if there was somewhere where I was lacking or didn't know how to do my manager, they gave me my first opportunity. I will never forget them. They always like, you know, pulled me back and said, hey, let's spend some time, partner with this person and you can build out, for example, some infrastructure or something, some, you know, in a sandbox and then, you know, test it and see it, how it works before you go in front of a client and start engineering on their end. So they did that, that give me a chance to learn and gave me a chance to, you know, walk hand in hand side by side and say, hey, we'll make sure you're where you need to be. Um, and then they'll also say, you know, they gave me so much credit. They're like, well, you do a lot of work. You know, you study and you try to get yourself up to speed. And I did. I did the work outside of work hours, too, to make sure that they weren't, you know, spending too much time trying to skill me up. I had to do the work on myself, too. Um, so that that's what I had to deal with. It was tough. And I would say even to this day, there's, you know, I there's things I don't know. But I think in this field right now, well, for me, I think it's important to say that you don't know or you're not sure or you're willing to go learn. Um, I think too many people pretend that they know and you don't want to save face. Um, and I think it's okay to say, hey, I'm not going to be the smartest person in the room. I'm willing to go work for it. And so that's what I dealt with a lot in my first job. And I would say ongoing is, you know, you have to be willing to just like say, hey, I want to learn. I want to, you know, take the time to learn this technology if I don't know too much about it um, and then come back stronger. Yeah. And would you say, you know, that continuous learning drive, do you see that across successful professionals in the field? Absolutely. I think that you never stop learning. Um, even in my previous career, you have you have to continue education, you know, units, you have to keep learning. But in cyber, I would say learning is definitely accelerated because every five years, I feel like technology becomes dated and there's always something new. So in order to stay current, in order to stay relevant and understand the landscape, you know, what new threats and things like that are introduced, you have to keep learning. You have to understand what are the technologies that, you know, engineers are wanting to start using, learn about it, see how they can use it safely. Um, so yeah, having that, you know, continuous learning is very, very important to moving up. Got it. On that last note, in terms of moving on up, um, you've obviously moved on into a role at Merck, a more advanced role in the field. What was that journey like? How did it come about? Sure. So I was a cloud security analyst at Booz Allen and um, Merck was one of the contracts that we served. Um, and on that contract, uh, I was... I was supported by an amazing team at Booz Allen. They were very, you know, cloud automation heavy, very smart, and they implemented, you know, infrastructure as code security at Merck and, you know, open source tooling and getting involved in, you know, their cloud security automation landscape and trying to help them expand that. So I was on that team and we kind of built out something for them and said, hey, this is something you can run in your pipelines to make sure that your infrastructure is deployed securely. Um, we applied severities, we applied remediation steps. We did like the whole shebang, built it all out for them on top of an open source tool. Um, and so the work that we did was so great <laughs> that they were just like, um, my manager now, 
he said, you know, I, I would love to have you on the team. I would love to have you work with us full time. And I did really like the work. I liked the level of learning that I did in that short amount of time. I learned so much that I decided to sign on full time with them. And um, it was a more senior position. He's like, what you started there, I want you to actually lead it now. I want you to, I'm going to put some people that, you know, report to you or work with you that you can, you know, guide. And so, and really mature this. And so I kind of look at it now as like my product, you know, something that I'm servicing to the organization is okay our IAC scanning security service, um, making sure that any infrastructure deployed as code, you know, has the security features built in. So secure by design is my whole motto, my whole mantra, making things very dev friendly and, you know, fast automation, building automation into the process. Um, and we really, you know, matured it. We went as far as, you know, sunsetting the old tool and then bringing in a new tool and also bringing hard fail rules, which are like blocks. So what happens if someone misconfigures something incorrectly that would be like reputational damaging, really, really tough for the company, we would have a block there. So they wouldn't be able to deploy unless they remediate. So my team actually manages that through and through in our CI CD pipelines. And I just have an amazing support. So that's kind of where I am today. And that's where I lead a team that that does that effort. So it went from just building it at Merck to supporting and carrying the torch. It's amazing. So, I mean, just to kind of recap, in four years, you've gone from, you know, being a physical therapist, seeing a post in a, a Microsoft Teams group, going through some rigorous training and various gamified activities, getting a client facing job at Booz Allen, eventually joining an organization such as Merck, Merck where you contributed internally on a technical basis and now are leading others um in terms of technical projects which is just a fantastic journey um and congratulations again thank you so on that note i do have two questions it's a two-part question the first part is you know what do you think christine in 2020 would think about what christine in 2024 is doing and the second question is just using the same number of years for what does christine want to be doing in 2028 yeah so Christine in 2020 would be in complete disbelief. Like, I wouldn't believe you <laughs> if I saw that this is what I was doing. Like, I just always thought that being technical or being in this arena was hard. And it is hard, um, but almost to the point was unattainable and not doable. That's what I would have thought in 2020. Um, so seeing myself now, um, it's it was just miraculous. Like the transformation, the growth, the learning, the fun along the way, because it was it's fun too. Um, and just like having those really lively discussions with colleagues now on technical level, we're talking technical for like 30 minutes to an hour where I didn't think I can even hold it for five minutes in 2020. So, um, yeah, so I would say just, just marveling at the person that I become in 2024. That's what I would have been doing 2020. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't like believe you. Um, and then in 2028, I mean, my goal is to move up and to go in a leadership role, um, my colleagues and cohort has always told me like, oh, we see you in leadership. We give, you know, you give us like CISO vibes, you know, you give us a vibe that you'd be able to lead, you know, a team, like you have that drawing personality. So, and I, and I, and I do see that I'm like, okay, well, my background can help with that. I do love, you know, connecting teams, connecting people. I'm very open and friendly, even in the technical space. I do want to be able to grow some more leadership skills, such as communicating, you know, business acumen to technical, like technical acumen to business acumen. So being able to convert the two and be able to talk to stakeholders, understand what they value, understand what their needs are, and being able to communicate that and not be so deep in the weeds technical, just showing the, the big picture, you know, and how we deliver value, how we mitigate risk, how we make sure our, you know, infrastructure, our landscape remains safe. Um, so that's where I would like to go is move up to leadership and enjoy the ride along the way. I mean, I'm open to any kind of learning and mentorship from other leaders. You know, I ask my man manager for one-on-ones all the time because I believe he's great at just communication. He's He knows how to manage up, down, across. He's great. So I really try to um, just emulate what he's kind of, you know, said and just learn from that. And I think that will take it a long way for me. So my goal is to get into a more leadership role. You it's amazing. Are, Thank you, Christine. 
<laughs> Go ahead, Lynn, please. Yeah, yeah thanks, Max. Uh, Christine, you know, you know that your story is so close to my heart. Like, I love your story. I was screaming from the mountaintops because it's a shining example of, just like you said, the Christine of 2020 wouldn't even believe that the Christine of 2024 even exists to the capacity that you are and the aspirations. I mean, we've followed your journey. We will continue to follow your journey and we can't wait until you're at that season. Like we will all be celebrating you. <laughs> we will all continue to celebrate you. Um, so the security training scholarship, this year's cohort is going to be opening up August 1st. What would you say to others that are listening to this about just, you know, when you come across it, like what, what kind of advice would you like to give other women on, hey, you might not think that you could do this, but but you can. Like what, what kind of uh, grit determination did you have within you that made you take this leap? Um, I think more so to see what's next, see what else I can do. Like what how far can I take this? You know, I guess it's just ambition. Like I've always been an extremely ambitious person. Um, and just growing up and stealing in me, my parents, you know, have just like knowledge is so important. Education is important, but just, I'm just generally just really ambitious, but my, my advice to them would say, you know, go after it. Even when you have doubt, just go after it and then be active in that Slack channel or whatever the group is, be active, ask questions, um, a lot of the, the women in the chat are super friendly and they want us, you know, all of us to succeed. Mm -hmm. So I would say lean on that camaraderie and, you know, find someone else maybe that has a similar background coming from not, you know, some other, you know, may have be a mom as well. Connect with a woman like that, you know, mm -hmm. building those connections and having those like-minded relatable connections is so important to helping you kind of like give you that confidence that, that yeah, I can do it. Um, but when you're just like, hey, I'm alone, I won't reach out, kind of like it won't, you won't feel that or get the result that you want. So I would just say, get involved, you know, find someone that is trying to do this too and, you know, work together and just know that it's very possible. You know, look at my story, like I said, to a mom who has small children. Now I have another small child. He's going to be one next week. And even with him and my grow my career, it's still a challenge, but absolutely you can do it. Um, you just have to, you really just dig within deep, dig deep within yourself. I love it. And so that curiosity, like being an active contributor when you join um, a programming effort like this, also allow that curiosity to continue to ask questions, grow your network and be just a part of the entire programming experience. So I really appreciate you sharing your story with the with us all here again today. Um, but and I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to witness your growth and expansion in the cybersecurity workforce. It's just been a, a fabulous experience for me and all of the WESIS community. Yeah. Christine, I had one more um, question. Uh, just a, a moment ago, you spoke about the advice you'd give to, you know, uh, someone considering the WESIS security training scholarship and that, that was spot on. I was curious now that you've, you know, been at two prominent organizations, you're starting to lead a team, what advice would you give to an employer? So just for a little context from our perspective, you know, mm -hmm. many employers continue to say they want to change their hiring practices. You know, four-year degrees are a thing of the past in terms of requirements for cybersecurity entry-level jobs. Um, you know, there's an emphasis on skills-based hiring, industry certifications. Even the federal government has said they're going to begin to move away from four-year degrees. However, in practice, many larger corporations and government agencies is going to take them years to do that. Um, it's a slow process. So you know, you obviously have done very well, but I'm sure you've talked to many of your peers from that first cohort and others who've gone through this type of program who have begun to land jobs. So if you were talking to, you know, a generic, you know, big box corporation or government agency or government contractor, what would you say about hiring people from non-traditional backgrounds who have gotten hands-on skills through these types of upskilling programs? Wonderful. Absolutely. I would ask them about the current skills they have, both technical as well as professional soft skills. So something I'm starting to see now in a lot of job descriptions on DICE is must have strong communication and good soft skills to communicate to management. I don't think I've seen that many times in the past. Before it was like a list of all these like technologies, tools, things that they want people to be well versed in. Um, so I would absolutely say you know, definitely vet their technical acumen. How much do they know? Can they do the job that you're hiring them for? However, also ask about 
what type of like other skills they have. Can they organize a team well? Can they communicate problems effectively? Do they communicate early? Um, do they believe in failing fast and iterating over, you know, over projects or making sure that they're, you know, checking in? Um, other skills that I think most people will, you know, not always have in technical, you I think you should ask about those. That's what I would tell the organizations. And just consider that person who, you know, may have made, not come from a traditional background and what do they have to offer to your company? Maybe they also look a little different than the people who are already working there, you know? And I don't, I don't mean by like, you know, how they look or presenting physically, but I mean also maybe they're a little more outgoing and their team is a completely introverted team. Or maybe they are willing to work cross-functionally with the teams. They're the first one to reach out. Um, did they give that vibe? Add them to your team. Bring them on because they just may start bridging the gaps and and bringing a lot of you know cross-functional team collaboration that has never happened in the organization before because they are just like the that person. And coupled with amazing technical skills, I think you have a superstar, in my opinion. So um, yeah, I would say asking about you know their technical skills, but equally as important is how important they can communicate and how well they can communicate, how they can get organized and manage their time. Um, yeah. So that's what I would say. Well said, Christine. <laughs> so, well, I really appreciate the conversation here today for folks that are listening on this uh, session, the security training scholarship within the WESIS organization is opening up August 1st. I would encourage you to share that with your community and join and be a part of that programming effort and continue to encourage others and um, be allies and advocates for others to also step into the cybersecurity space. So definitely at WESIS, we have a very large table where each and every one has a place where they belong. So we'd love others to be able to join the journey such as Christine. And in addition to that, follow Christine. She's on LinkedIn. I mean, her journey is fascinating. And this is just the beginning of what Christine has to offer the world. So please connect with her on LinkedIn and continue to follow her journey. And with that, I'm going to pass the mic on over. Yeah, thanks so much, Lynn. Um, appreciate it. Thank you, Christine, for your time today, for sharing your journey. We're so excited about the progress you've made in your career already, setting an example for individual career changers who are reskilling and upskilling into cybersecurity at a time when we need to expand the workforce and increase diversity, equity, and inclusion in the field. Um, so we're proud to partner with WESIS to continue growing those efforts. And we hope the employer community continues to hire graduates of these types of programs, because that's the best chance we have at solving the talent gap the nation faces. So thank you again today, Christine, Lynn, for your time. Thanks everyone for your time listening and have a great day. Thank you.